We're family, huh? Yeah, welcome, family. Um, yeah, if uh, you know, I'm I'm also a brother, right? An older brother, no, maybe grandpa. Huh? It's like, um, but uh, you know, it's uh, I I cannot you know cannot wait for uh, you guys to go to college. I want to steal you now. Praise team, huh? It's so good. The praise team was so good today. I hope that uh, one day you can come and uh, worship with us in the 9:30 uh, English worship. Uh, I would love to have you instead of me singing. Uh, song tracks, you know, and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I, I, I hope you guys are feeling blessed, right, with, uh, with this, uh, this series of uh, Sermon on the Mount. You know, J Jesus is funny, right? It's like, he start out, uh, you know, this is a, a good Sermon on the Mount. It's a good um, step for us to follow Jesus uh, as disciples, right? Uh, this year, we are, you know, our, our, our church theme is to uh, uh, join a life group and be a disciple. And this is uh, good. And then he starts out to tell you that is, you know, being a disciple of Jesus is blessed. You know, you guys are, you know, all happy, right? Some people, uh, the translation is to be happy, to be joyful, right? And, uh, but when you look at it, it's kind of weird what Jesus is saying is blessed, right? Spiritually poor, right? Uh, my, my life group was talking about meekness. Like, wait, we got to be weak. Uh, you know, they, they translate meekness be weak. But it's not, you know. It's about that we have a humble heart, a meekness to follow Jesus. Everything has to do with Jesus uh, in, the, uh, in the beatitude. It's talking about that, you know, that when you are spiritually poor, when you realize you're spiritually poor, you can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you mourn for your sins and you can be forgiven, you know, because Jesus uh, died on the cross for us, right? When, when, um, when we seek God, we see him, right? Uh, it's like knock and uh, he will answer the door. You know, and uh, we, when we be merciful to other people, we recognize how merciful God is to us, right? And uh, when we li live in the in the peace, uh, in the grace of God, right? We see God in our life, right? And um, and we we are you know looking for to be a peacemaker because God Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and He came to be um, you know to bring peace into the world. And I. I you know, yesterday um, in my other life group, I was talking about, you know, uh, the, the, the Bible verse about, you know, getting slapped on one side and letting other people slap you. And uh, some people think that, you know, um, you know, it's not literal, right? It's, uh, it's more about if somebody, you know, uh, did wrong to you, you know, don't, you know, don't retaliate or whatever it is. And, uh, and the example was given that Jesus was slapped and then he didn't give the other side to the other person. He was telling him, why did you slap me? I didn't do anything. Why do you slap me? But I tell you, you got to look at Jesus take everything to a next level. Jesus died on the cross for that person. Right? He slapped him and Jesus died on the cross for the other person. And this is the Prince of Peace. And today we come to the last beatitude. The last beatitude talks about that, um, you know, we are persecuted for righteousness and you're blessed. How many of you likes to be persecuted? Oh, yeah, <laughs> see? Yeah, we have one. All right. Well, two, me too. All right. Yeah, but, um, but it's not the way you think, right? If you per you're, you're being persecuted, you know, it's a tough, tough things to go through. But this is, you've got to pay attention to the Bible verse. It says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, right? Uh, that is our, our Bible verse, is that, for there is the kingdom of heaven. And uh, when you look at the, the, the beatitude, you need to look at the whole thing, right? We can see it's like in the parenthesis, it's that it's, there is the kingdom of God when, it's, when you are spiritually poor. And there is the kingdom of God when you come to the last beatitude. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. 
So you have to, even though it's a short message, short uh, uh, passage, but you need to take it into whole, you know, account, the whole thing into account. It's not just being persecuted, but it's being persecuted for righteousness. But first and foremost, I want you to go back to the, first, uh, the beginning of this um, uh, chapter. The p- beginning of the chapter is this, that uh, Jesus said, seeing the crowds, he went up onto the mountain. When he sat down, his disciple came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught him, saying. So this is, this is the beginning of the Sermon of the Mount. And what it does, it means that uh, this, na- uh, you know, I probably uh, kills the, the Greek, it's uh, anabio, it's, um, it's, it means uh, going up, uh, up on the mountain, it also can go, say going into the mountain. And it has this, you know, this, this, uh, this, this meaning for me anyway, to follow Jesus. He saw the crowd, and some people follow him, and he sat down, and he said, and he teach them, and then he called them his disciples. And it's all about following Jesus. It's all about being his disciple, isn't it? Right? So it's like going into a venture with Jesus. We have to go follow him. If you don't go in, if you are the crowd and you didn't go in, you would not have heard this message, right? Same thing with today. You say, oh, no, I'm hearing the message now. Yeah, but because you came to church and you follow Jesus into the church, right? And, and you follow Jesus in your life and you can be taught by Jesus how to live a blessed life. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that good, right? So, but... But first of all, we need to know, you know, if if the message is to be persecuted for righteousness, so we need to know what is righteousness, right? My 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 uh, my my best friend, uh, Pastor Sam, already talked to you about what is right, what is the 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 right angle, and you know, the straight row, and all that stuff. I'm not going to talk about that too much. I'm just going to go into what I think about righteousness. It says that blessed are those who are persecutors for righteousness. So I think righteousness is God, right? Daniel said in uh, uh, chapter 9, verse 7, he says, to you, O Lord, belongs righteousness. And in uh, verse 14, it says that, for the Lord our God is righteous in all the works that he has done. So God is righteousness. So I want to, I want to, take you to think about God as righteousness and how we follow God or follow Jesus and we are blessed by it. And that's, uh, that's uh, we go back to this Bible verse and you'll see uh, the next, next, next verse is, blessed are you who, when others revile you and persecute you and alter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Some people say this is the, 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 the ninth beatitude, right? You know, but uh, you know, mo- mo- most commentary is thinking that this is an expansion into the eighth the, uh, beatitude. That, so that when you are persecuted on the account of Jesus equals to when you are persecuted for righteousness. So you're following Jesus is meaning you're following righteousness and that, when you are persecuted, you are blessed. But let me tell you something, right? Uh, well, this is uh, the 12. It said, rejoice and be glad. You know, so if we follow Jesus and we are, we are, uh, uh, we are persecuted, we have to be rejoice and be glad. And, uh, and for your reward is great and so forth, right? So this is the message. Um, you know, I don't, I don't agree with all the translation in the message. But I think the message agrees with me, right? <laughs> it's like, he said, you're blessed it in uh, verse 10, not 11, but verse 10. is that you're blessed it when your commitment to God provokes persecution. That is what I want to talk to you about today. It's not that you want to get into persecution, but when you follow Jesus, you are, will be persecuted. When you follow Jesus, you will be persecuted. And I'll tell you a secret. 
when you don't follow Jesus, you still be persecuted. Just not blessed, right? Um, so the reason for persecution, right? The first reason for persecution is that um, uh, this is um, this is uh, Romans five. Uh, I forgot to put the Romans thing on it. Uh, Romans five uh, twelve to thirteen. It says that therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. It. It's a sinful world. So why do, are we persecuted following Jesus? It's like, you know, if it's like that you are, you are walking against the world. So, uh, of course, the world is against you, right? And so you are persecuted. You know, um, I don't know if you have met anybody who, you know, who drinks, who smokes, uh, who swears, and, uh, you know, and uh, do bad deeds and stuff like that, and then you started to go to church, and they started to laugh at you, ridicule you, uh, you know, do all kinds of things to you, make fun of you, and so forth. You know, you going to church? You're paying, you're giving them like 10% of your salary? You know, and stuff like that. You know, that's persecution. And I know that firsthand, because I'm the one that was persecuting the Christian when I was young. I was the one. And to this day, I'm, I'm so glad that my friend has came back to, came back to the church. And he's uh, serving the youth ministry, uh, the children ministry now in uh, Oregon. And, uh, but I made him walk away from the church. I made him walk away from the church. It's, uh, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to even think about that. But, but that's how it is, right? And... Um, in the uh, uh, first 13, it said, For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Right? When we live outside of the church, outside of God, outside of our faith, we don't think about that there is a law. We don't think about us as sinners. Blessed are those who are spiritually poor. It's not that you will finally... Uh, became spiritually poor. No, all of us are spiritually poor. And we finally realize we are spiritually poor. because, And we realize that and then we come back to Christ for the salvation of Christ. Right? When I was not in church, I didn't think that I was a bad person. I make fun of you. I don't think I was a bad person. I think you're dumb, right, to go to church. So John 15, 18, it says this. It says, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Again, talking about Jesus. He came to the world. He's a, he, he's a savior. He's the prince of peace. He's the almighty God. And he died on the cross for us. Why he have to die on the cross? Because we persecuted him. Because we persecuted him. Because he was walking against the grain of the world. We per persecuted him. And finally, Luke 21, 17, it says that you will be hated by all for my name's sake. So when you follow Jesus, when you follow righteousness, you will be persecuted, guys. I'm sorry, but you will be. But let, I will give you the good news. Now, the, the, you know, this is the bad news. I'll give you the good news from now on, okay? All right. So it says, what kind of persecution you face, right? This is the persecutions that you face. Uh, of course, the list is long, but this is three that comes to mind. This is the things that I did to Christians when I was not a Christian, right? It is, it is seen that marked we, we disrespect. Just like Jesus, right? Jesus was not respected by a lot of people who is outside, right? And uh, don't want to hang out with you, right? You know, even Jesus, you know, he said, well, where's everybody went, right? And when he teach something that's hard to understand, he, people walked away. They don't want to listen to him. 
And they have ridiculed and slandered him to a point that they have false witness to point out to him that he's, uh, and, and uh, you know, that's when he was sentenced to death. And that's what we do. When you are outside of the church, that's what people do. Right? And um, so I know this guy, uh, you know, I want to talk about this guy, um, uh, George uh, uh, Galatus. Yeah, my, my English is not good. All right, George Galatus. He's a senior engineer in Millstone Nuclear Power Plant uh, in Waterford, Connecticut, in America. And uh, in the 90s. And um, so he, one day, you know, he's a senior junior, uh, engineer, and he saw the violations of the company in his uh, power plant. So they have a big pool to, to kind of cool off the nuclear fuel rods, you know, so, so that the regulation is, they're supposed to take only one third of it at a time. And it have to spend so many hours in the pool to cool off before they can rotate the other views and, and uh, discard the other ones. But this company was throwing all the fuel rod into the pool. And supposedly, it's like 56 hours. They have to stay in there. Uh, they j just leave it there like for 30 hours or 20-something you know, 20 hours. So he saw that this is dangerous. It, it, it gives up this uh, radioactive vapor into the, you know, into the atmosphere, into the plant, and, and it's um, dangerous to everybody who is working there. And it's dangerous to the people who's living around Waterford as, as well, right? So, so that's what he's, he's thinking. So he talked to his colleagues. Some of them are Christians. And he talked to them, and they, they agree with him, but they said, wow, but... Hey, if you, you know, uh, if you uh, be a snitch, right, you, know, you watch the gangster, I, I watch gangster movie too much, you know, snitches get stitches, right? You know, don't, don't do it, right? You dog meat, right? It's, don't do it. And um, so he went to a supervisor, and some of the supervisor are Christian as well, and he talked to them, and they told him, he said, hey, hey, George, this is a business. This is not church. This is business. This is not church. How many of us living as Christians like that today? That when we walk out of these doors in the church, that we, it's business as usual. That we are living the same life that everybody else in this world is living. Guys, I know you guys are thinking, hey, Pastor Paul, I know what you're talking about. I've been hearing this the, you know, the, for, the, for my whole life. I've been hearing this these stories and this, um, uh, you know, this teaching and stuff. I know this, you know. Every, every week you come and you listen to the pastor, you say, ah, I know this. But sometimes we don't really pay attention or take it seriously in our life, right? One of the, um, my mom passed away about two months ago. Well, three months ago already, wow, so fast. And, um, you know, uh, in... One of the weeks I was uh, sharing my devotion with the pastoral staff and the, and the office staff. And uh, the, 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 the prophet Joel was, uh, that's what I was reading about repentance and stuff. And this thought came into my mind. Is that since my mom passed away till the funeral, I have not cried. I know I'm supposed to be sad. I know I'm sad. But I never, I have not stopped to cry. For three weeks, I was trying to plan all the things that is going on, you know, because my mom was a Christian and not all my brother is. So I was planning everything and I was close to her because I'm in San Francisco, there in LA. And I went down there three times, you know. Never once I cried. Until one day, uh, the, the day of uh, visitation, we had a four-hour visitation before the memorial service the night before. And, uh, and, and, the, and the Cassius was here. And I was just, you know, this whole room was filled with my family. And I was just sitting on the corner by myself. And I was looking at the casket. I finally sat down and looked at my mom. And then I stood up 
for a long time. I, was, I probably sit there for like half an hour. And then, I fall, and then I came up and I looked at her. I, I was laser focused on her death. And I started crying. And I couldn't stop. And my, my oldest son came, put his hand on me. And, then I, you know, my son came and put on a hand. I, I cry even more. And my, my wife and my youngest son came up. And I even cried more. I couldn't stop. Un unstoppable. Weeping. So I walked out of the funeral hall. And I walked around the cemetery by myself crying until I can contain myself. I think as a Christian, we know this study. A lot of people say, you know, I, I tell them, hey, let's do a discipleship. And he said, I already went through the course of discipleship. Ten years ago, it's not like that. We need to look intently into the death of Jesus Christ in our life. And what does that mean to us? And that's how we follow Jesus. And we, we can, you know, just like Pastor Caleb was saying, we are a family. We should look at it together. And that's why we join a life group and be a disciple. I'm not telling you to be a whistleblower or a snitch. I'm telling you this story is because George didn't know what to do for two years. Nobody cares. For two years. And he started to wake up 4 o'clock in the morning to come to the Lord in prayer, in scripture. And he did that for two years. And nobody wants to eat with him, right? Nobody, you know, that's one of the persecution. So he drive to a secluded place and he pray. And it's in one of this prayer, he heard God's voice telling him, do you want to die? Uh, would, you, would you die for me? And he realized, you know, dying is not just dying, but it's persecution. Will you be persecuted for righteousness, for Jesus. That's what he's saying. He's saying that when he takes this next step, he might lose his job. He might be ridiculed. He might be slandered by the corporate lawyers. He might put a lot of strain in his family, in his financial situation. But he did it. And he went to the, uh, report them um, with, uh, with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And they laughed him out of the door. This is the difference between the righteousness of this world and the righteousness of God. The righteousness of this world, the law can be bent. The, 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 the agency that comes out with this regulation can look the other way, right? Just like... When I drive down to Los Banos, you know, the speed limit is 65. If I drive 75, no, the cops not going to stop me. They, they you know, one, one mile over the limit is breaking the law. But, but the people who make the law is not going to stop you. This is the righteousness of the world. But the righteousness of God is different. There's no bending, right? Some, people, some, some of us, we are Christians and we say, oh, I'm still on the sideline. I'm thinking about serving. I'm thinking about baptism. There's no, no on the fence. It's either you're in or you're out. There's no, no, no on the fence. You're in or you're out, right? Uh, you know, so... But of course, I don't, I don't judge. I, I don't know what your situation is. It's you and God, your relationship with God. How, how are you? You know. You know if you are in or out, deep inside. But we need to look, focus, laser focus on the death of Jesus Christ, and you will know. And that's what George did. So he went and... Um, and did a town hall meeting and then everything, and the press caught on. And, you know, he has, he has his 15-minute fame. He's on the Time magazine and everything. And he saved the town, I think. He saved the town. He saved, 
save the plant because the plant closed down. There's three plants. Uh, one of them permanently closed down. The other two spent almost a billion dollars in the 90s to fix whatever that was wrong over there. You know, I, I don't know if you know, uh, you know, some of you are not born yet, but um, uh, there's, there was a pipeline fire of PG&E pipeline fire in San Bruno. My son was uh, going to a school right next to it. I was so worried. And it's because they didn't spend the money to fix it. And this plan, why did they look away? It's because they're saving half a million dollars a day doing what they were doing. Risking everybody's life for money, right? That is the righteousness of the world, right? So, so I love this story because, well, I don't know what he's doing now, but, but he was called to seminary when he was in college, but he, he chose not to, right? My son said he, he was called to a seminary, but now he didn't, he don't want to do it yet. Uh, if you're watching, you, then I'm talking to you, right? But after all this persecution, all these things, all these things happened, he went into seminary. After four years, they gave him a servant's package, you know, firing them, kind of getting rid of this troublemaker. And he went to seminary, and he became a pastor. What a, what a great story. Right? I, I think it was a great story. So, but, but it's not because he saved all these people's life. It's not because he did a righteous thing, in, um, even in the world's uh, eyes. It's because his six-year walk with God, that's what I want you guys to focus on. That's the blessing. The blessed is present tense. It's not, you know, future tense. It's present tense. We are blessed when we struggle in our persecutions, in our lives, for righteousness, for following Jesus, that is the blessing. That, and, and also, you know, you know I, I persecuted the Christian. I also first-hand knowledge of the blessing of G walking with Jesus Christ. I have so many stories. You know, you can come and talk. I can talk to you all day about my stories of blessings in Jesus Christ. So this is, um, so this is uh, the, the response to persecution for Christians. The Christians respond to it is in, it's in uh, uh, verse 12. Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, of course, because the kingdom of heaven is yours. But also in the in earth, when you experience God in your life, oh man, your life change, right? Some of us, when we travel, we go in front of uh, whatever place, and we, you know, you know, I'm from. And take a picture, and then we go, right? Right? And, uh, you know, uh, you guys might be going like this, I guess. I, I, you know. Yeah. But, you know, but sometimes w when we follow Jesus, this is how, what we do. We just go and take a selfie with Jesus, you know? And that's it. We need to climb the mountain, we need to be an adventure and go into the mountain with Jesus or go upon the mountain with Jesus. Every time I go to this, you know, you can see, you know, I'm big. You know, I don't, I don't want to call myself fat, but I'm big, right? So when I go up to the hill, it's very hard. I like to ride my bike as well. <laughs> right? It's... It's painful. Persecution is painful, guys. But every single time when I'm finished with my hike or finished with my ride, I can't help it but say, wow, what a good ride. Wow, what a good hike. That's how we should be as Christians. We follow Jesus. You know, the battle belongs to the Lord, right? We want to see a victory, right? 
we will see a victory. Okay? And, um, you know, I want to end with this uh, Bible verse. Um, Philippians 3, 9, it says that, And be found in him, not having righteousness of my own, that comes from the Lord, law, but that which come from the faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. And that's what I wish for all of you. Let's bow our head. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We just thank you so much that we are in here as a family, listening to your word and, and be motivated to follow you, Lord. We know that it's hard. It's a hard world because this world is against us. But, Father, we just ask you to bless these young people that they have this tenacity to continue to follow you and have faith to, to overcome this persecution in your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.